Paradox of Choice. Life-changing book. I read it today. Uh, yeah, today and only today. I mentioned my very first YouTube video. I'm, uh, I'm going to be reading a book a day. Now, you know, not cover to cover. This is not my idea. This is something I got from Ty Lopez. Credit to him. Uh, you know, an online mentor, if you will. Uh, so, I'm going to be talking a lot about books the next eight months. I'm going to read a book a day. So, uh, let's, let's get into it. I'm going to read this, uh, this quote real quick. I was circling from the very beginning. Basically, the concept of this book it's uh, business related. So in a, in, a, in a capitalist marketplace with market freedom, consumers are statistically and provenly less happy, proven to be less happy with more options. Less options, they're happy. So this guy takes that fact and applies it to life. And is like, hey, uh, you know, on the front, the very front of the book, it says uh, why more is less and how the culture of abundance robs us of satisfaction. So, um, you know, you meet people all the time who are trying to get every single possible thing they can out of their dollars. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I work at Red Lobster right now, so just on the weekends, you know, haha. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, you know, people be like, yo, your food is way too expensive. I'm like, you don't, you're not here for the food, for real. That's a true fact. You're here for the experience and you're here for the convenience, okay? Otherwise, you'd, br you'd bring your lazy ass to the grocery store, you'd buy some lobster tails and you'd cook that shit up at home and you'd be a happy person. It'd be a lot cheaper, all right? So, uh, you know, that being said, he talks about uh, maximizers and satisfiers. Uh, and uh, satisfiers are a lot uh, more happy in their life, meaning that they are satisfied with their decisions, meaning they do settle in a way. They settle for uh, good enough, not the best, especially when it comes to money but in life and the reason why like let me give you an example real quick my parents <clears throat> very frugal that's not a bad thing they're very careful with their money right but uh it's like they will spend hours online trying to find the best deal on some fucking toilet paper and i'm telling my dad one day i'm like do you not realize that that hour you just spent looking for some toilet paper trying to fucking save seven or eight cents, you could have been out figuring out how to make money. So, you know, that's just my own little rant. But uh, the point is, is, you know, in that scenario, you're stepping over dollars to save pennies, right? So, uh, you know, I thought that was very applicable because uh, people who settle... And it is settling, you know, I don't know. There may be some negative connotations surrounded around settling in life or whatever. But it is settling. People who settle in a way for good enough rather than the best are statistically happier in life. One, because they don't spend as much time around stupid little tiny decisions that don't matter, okay? And number two, the second point that I'm about to talk about is that they focus on the big things, you know, when you are, you know, trying to choose something very serious, like maybe what college to go to, or maybe even a career, then it'll pay to spend a little more time going through a very logical decision making process. Whereas you know, you can't be spending all this time trying to figure out 
how you're going to save a couple cents on some eggs or something, man. You know what I'm saying? So uh, that's the second thing he talks about, you know, uh, figure out, put your, put your goals in your, in your, put your goals in a, a stri- in a, in a hierarchy with the decisions that you need to make and focus on the big decisions, not the small decisions, you know, meaning that, uh, you know, of course you want control of your life, right? But, uh, don't think that it matters whether or not you get like some gravy on your mashed potatoes rather than butter like it's like the hardest decision you ever made choose a motherfucking topping and be satisfied for real that's what he talks about next the main next main point everything suffers from comparison so uh you know in business we call this buyer's remorse typically you know Let's say you bought a new Corvette, you know, you drive it off the lot, brand new yellow Corvette, you turn to the right and you didn't even notice there was an orange Corvette and you like that orange Corvette a lot better. But guess what? You can't bring that Corvette back because you already bought it. So, uh, you know, you can't compare your life or most of the decisions you make to other people's or other things or other or anything else because it will never be quite as good as someone else's and that's the problem you know he says never compare your decision to other people or to other hopes expectations past experiences and the experience of others because chances are there's going to be at least one thing that was a lot better than what you chose, you know. So, uh, uh, you know, the, the, I'm going off on a little rant here. <laughs> I'm just learning how to do this, but I love it, though. I dig it for sure. This is fun for me. Uh, the, main, the main point is that every time you make a decision, you know, you're... Uh, you're setting up your destiny with all sorts of, uh, you know, other, other options, you know, every time, you know, it's a ripple effect, you know, every time you make a decision, it has a, uh, it has a very, it has a long-term effect on your life, on your future, on your goals, and so, it's very important to strategize your goals and make the decisions carefully that are important and uh, things like this. And then, you know, trying to find this quote here. I think the last thing, you know, they have the uh, this, like, happiness scale. You know, it's at 1 to 7, a lot of different things. You know, like, in, ge- in general, I consider myself, you know, 1, not a very happy person, or 7, a very happy person. And, uh... You know, it even says subjective happiness scale. It's all subjective. You know, happiness, you're responsible for your own happiness, you know. And uh, ironically, you know, I'm really telling myself that more than anything because I know that I try to blame other people for my happiness all the time. Dude, I got some little hoes right now dude scandalous hoes that aren't texting me back and i'm thinking like what are you doing like this is so annoying you know but uh then i realize i remind myself you know i'm i'm responsible for my own happiness you know they uh they're not just not texting me back for just to get at me or anything like that it's for their own selfish reasons and that's fine that's totally fine so i can't uh I can't think that they're, you know, like not texting me back just because they want to like get back at me or they want to try to like be scandalous and get a reaction out of me or something like that because the only person that's responsible for your own happiness is you, okay? Me, if you will. So, uh, you know, I think the most important thing and the last thing that I want to talk about is... uh, the, he has 11 things 
that he says what to do about choice. You know, a self-help book isn't worth anything if they don't give you a solution for the problem, if they're not just, you know, recognizing the problem is great. Obviously, you know, that's the first step. But, uh, you know, so he uh, so he gives some, some of his, uh, his insights here, if you will. Um, so a real quick quote from the very last chapter. Uh, we are free to be the authors of our own lives, but we don't know exactly what lives we want to write. So I think that's, he's, um, he's saying that we're crowded with decisions in life, and because of that, it makes it very hard to figure out what our end game goal is, if you will, you know. Um, so number one of 11, you know, choose when to choose. Uh, you know, choose when to choose. I love that. I dig it so much because, you know, he's like I said, put them in a put your choices in the hierarchy. Decide which choices are more important to make. All right. Um, you got to focus on the choices that really matter, that really matter in your life. Jesus. Keep doing that shit. All right. You know, uh, number two, be a chooser, not a picker. Uh, you know, it goes on in that part, shorten or eliminate deliberations about decisions that are unimportant to you. All right. Um, use some of the time you freed up to ask yourself what you really want in the areas of your life where decisions matter. And if you discover that none of the options the world presents in those areas meet your needs, start thinking about better options that do. All right, you know. So what he's change saying here, I think, is, you know, in my own words, if you will, uh, what he's trying to say is that, uh, you know, if you if you're if none of the decisions that are important in your life you need to go out and start finding more decisions more options choices that matter just like number one number three <clears throat> satisfice more and maximize less we talked about that a little bit in the beginning you know east goes on to say learning to accept good enough will simplify decision making and increase satisfaction. You know, it's a proven fact because you'll never get the most for your dollar, okay? You'll never get the most for your time. You just, it's not possible. You will go crazy. I drive myself insane trying to think about like, what if I didn't spend my money here and spent my money here? What if I went out with this girl and not that girl? You know, what if, uh, uh, what if I had decided to go to this pool and not that pool? Would I have met a different person? Would I have, you know, it's, no one can win at that game. It's not possible. All right, so we talked about satisfies, satisfiers and maximizers. You know, be a satisfier. Be satisfied. Now, that doesn't mean settle for a shitty life. All right, that's not it. Don't, you know, don't think that because you should, you know... Like, I'm not a glass half full kind of guy by any means, you know, like, uh, I'm going to walk into the room and be like, why the fuck is that glass not full? Fill it up right now, you know, but that's kind of the point, actually. If you want the most you can possibly get out of your life, then you won't focus on petty decisions, you know, like, uh, like, I, you know, I mentioned before I work at Red Lobster right now and you see, like, uh, for example someone uh, trying to, you know, say that their food sucks or something, trying to get uh, free shit all the time uh, because they're a maximizer, you know, that makes them feel like they're winning, but truthfully, they're a lot less happy than you think. They walk out of that restaurant, they're still unhappy. They're not happy about getting $5 off on a steak, 
or getting a meal comped, you know, or uh, getting some free shrimp or something like that, you know. Be a satisfier, you know. Be satisfied essentially with the choices you make so you can focus on the important choices, right, that will really affect your life. Uh, number four, think about the opportunity costs of opportunity costs, right? You know, this is actually, to be honest with you, this is still a little bit hard for me to understand. That's kind of why I do these videos, you know, not only so I can understand it better, but also so that I can, you know, hopefully help you understand it a little bit as well too. But you know, right at the beginning, when making a decision, it's usually a good idea to think about the alternatives we will pass up when choosing our most preferred option, right? So, you know, we kind of already talked about this, actually, you know, it's you know, opportunity costs, right? When you try to save a couple dollars on some toilet paper you could be giving up a million dollar deal that you could have go you know you could have gone and made with a new connection out in the world or met someone new or uh, had a, had a great experience you know opportunity costs right ignoring these opportunity costs can lead us to overestimate how good the best option is so you know, I guess what he's saying is if, you know, you can overthink it too. Like I said, it can drive you a little bit crazy thinking about all the things you could have given up uh, by driving to Denver. Or, you know, I'm out here in Colorado, so, you know, that's like about an hour away. But when you could have been driving the opposite direction, maybe something else would happen. The paradox of choice, you know, it'll drive you insane. It really is. It's a mind provoking book. But let's move on. That's another little rant. Uh, make your decisions non reversible. So um, I think the best example he was giving of this is that. Uh, there was a market research done uh, on stores that did allow ret returns on the things you bought and then stores that didn't allow returns. And uh, the stores, you know, the customers who bought things from the stores that did not allow returns were actually happier, uh, you, know, you know, statistically and tested and stuff like this, you know. It's book knowledge, you know. There's a lot of psychology. He cites about 500 sources at the end of the book. You know, it's book knowledge. I don't got to question it. But, uh, you know, if that's something that you want to, like, try to pick out yourself, you can go do that. You know, you can get this book anywhere. But, uh, you know, it's a proven fact, you know, because it was tested. So, anyway, the, uh, the people who were not allowed to return their items were happier because once they bought that item and walked out of the store, boom, that's theirs forever. And the, you know, the reason why, you know, is because uh, people like to know and re be reinforced about the fact that they uh, made a good decision when they buy. Not only that, but the option of returning it is not even there. The option of wasting your time does not even exist. You know, you know. Another book by Grant Cordone, "Seller Be Sold." I'm going to talk about that later. It talks about the same thing, man. When people, the reason why people recommend things to their friends, think about it. Why would that be? Not because they want to help out the business. Unless they're involved with the business, then maybe they do. But it's because they want to be reassured that the decision that they made was a good decision. The thing that they bought was a good thing to buy. Uh, you know, that's why uh, that's why network marketing is is such a great and proven concept because you know you get to recommend the things that, you know that you're buying. Basically, do what you're already doing as a career. It's a little bit mind-boggling, but that's a conversation for the, another day. Let's move on. You know, uh, 
practice an attitude of gratitude you know that self-explanatory same concept you know be happy with the decisions you make and it's mostly about business but you know it's about everything too you know once you make a decision you know be grateful that you made that decision be happy with that decision number seven regret less the sting of regret either actual or potential colors many decisions and sometimes influences us to avoid making decisions at all you know that's thought provoking right because uh you know you could spend all this time regretting and hating on a product or something or, or a decision that you made and the same concept applies you know opportunity cost you're wasting your time you know you hear all the great leaders say it all the time. Ty Lopez, you know, I talk about him a lot. Time and energy, you know, two most valuable things you have. If you are wasting your time regretting and your energy regretting something, then it got the best of you. So not only do you hate the product, but you're also now out here wasting more time and energy. And then he talks about, you know, ways that you can... Uh, avoid that uh number number one reducing the number of options we consider before making a decision and two practicing gratitude for what is a good decision rather than focusing on our disappointments with what is bad number eight anticipate adaptation you know then he goes on to say we adapt to almost everything we experience with any regularity um, when life is hard adaptation enables us to avoid the full brunt of hardship you know um, can't lie I still don't understand that well, that well that's why I'm doing this you know it's helping me out here so uh, let me see if I can't you know so it goes on, but when life is good, adaptation puts us on a hedonic treadmill, robbing us of the full measure of satisfaction we expect from each positive experience. We cannot prevent adaptation, right? So, uh, you know, especially in the marketplace, I think what he's trying to say is that um, the consumer, as long as well as the uh, you know, who, whoever or whatever is selling something, you know, is going to have to be able to adapt, you know, to uh, to changes. You know, I think that's like uh, technology is a good example. You know, you uh, you buy an iPhone, right? Six months later, a brand new one comes out. And, uh, you know, you're going to have to anticipate that the market adapted a little bit, you know. But that but you got to realize, you know. Buying the newest iPhone has nothing to do with your happiness. Point blank, period. Number 10. Curtail social comparison. This might be the hugest thing for me. Uh, you know, it's business, but it's life. You know, I think I, yeah, one, of my, uh, one of my mentors said that uh, business is a metaphor for life recently. So, uh, you know, because it's the, it's the same thing, you know, you got to maintain cash flow, you know, you got to, you got to be in love with liquid capital, you got, you know, same thing, same thing, it's a metaphor for life, and we can talk about that a different day, it's a proven theory, but this is huge for me, uh, because I spent a lot of my life comparing myself socially, Right. I mean, I still do, of course. It's very hard, but it reminds me, uh, you know, let me get like an example. Like, let's say I'm at the gym, right? And there's, uh, you know, because I'm trying to get my fitness on, you know. Oh, damn, I'm sweating a little bit. Right? <laughs> I get some little muscle mass, dude. But, uh, you know, then I see like a guy who's like a little bit taller than me, you know, maybe a little bit more handsome by social standards. Uh, Maybe he's a little bit more fit than me. And then I start comparing myself 
to this guy. Let's call him John. And so I start thinking, you know, and it bugs me in my head. And I'm like, you know, uh, why am I not as tall as John? And, you know, why am I not as fit as John? And wait a second. Like, why... Why am I not as handsome as John? Why don't I have as hot of a girlfriend as John? What you don't realize is that not even John can win at that game. It's impossible. No one can win at that game, you know. Uh, there's probably always someone who's going to be a little bit handsomer, a little bit richer, a little bit fitter, you know. But that doesn't mean that they have to be better, you know. That's the thing about me and you. This is a lot harder to start from the bottom and work your way up than it is to um, come up with a silver spoon in your mouth, you know. So uh, that's huge for me. And, you know, he his example he uses is like uh, going out to dinner. And you, you know, you say that your experience was horrible, but, uh, or the food was horrible. But, you know, then he makes the point that most of the time when you go out to eat, the food is not horrible. You know, it's horrible by comparison. And an idea that you had locked in your head about what food should be when you eat out. You know, what, uh, what kind of standard it should be held to uh, when you buy your experience and you buy your convenience at a restaurant, right? Um... And the last one, he says, learn to love constraints. Um, my favorite little passage from this last part, you know, he says, uh, in the short run, think about these second order decisions, uh, which are decisions about life, uh, you know, about when in life we will deliberate and when we will follow low predetermined path adds a layer of complexity to life. And then he goes on to say, but in the long run, many of the daily hassles will vanish and we will find ourselves with time, energy, and attention for the decisions we have chosen to retain. So um, constraints on your decisions just means you have less decisions to make point blank period you have less decisions to make in life right so and he, sp he says in the end we will find ourselves with more time more energy and more attention for the decisions we have chosen to retain if we you know cut down our decisions period you know make less decisions um and uh that's about it man you know uh you know the paradox of choice, you know. Just remember, every decision you make has a has a, you know an an end game effect. It's it's the ripple effect. So, you know, we need to spend our time. You know, sorry, my hair is all over the fucking place right now. We need to spend our time focusing on the big decisions. You know, putting our decisions in a hierarchy, and uh, you know ultimately choosing to choose uh, the most important, the most uh, influential choices on our life, our end game goals, you know, that will affect our why, why we're doing what we're doing, why we're even on this planet, you know, not trying to get every dollar out of every meal you eat out. You know, that's just an example because it's applicable to my life, right? So that's what it is, man. I'll see you next time.